Hey guys, this is Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus, and today we're going to go over how to build a futuristic office furniture like this one. So I was going through Google and, uh, images and I was checking out sci-fi environments and I found this and I thought this would be a really good example of not only showing you how to create very quickly how to model these chairs, but also how to texture it as well. Hopefully we will get something similar to this. Probably not exactly like it, but we're going to get something similar. So um, by the way, you can download this and the final models at academicphoenixplus.com. So please go ahead and check it out. I can download the images as well as the completed models at academicphoenixplus.com. It's a free download. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, by the way, if anybody knows who created this, that will be great. I have no idea. I just found it. I have a tendency to just download a bunch of files and then I forget who created it. So whoever created it, thank you so much. It's awesome. Hopefully I can mimic it and do some justice to it. So let's go ahead and take a look at the chair. Let's build this first. So the chair seems to be very organic. Somehow it's floating with this cool little thing. So let's go ahead and model it. So I'm thinking we can use a curve. So we're going to start off with the side view and I'm going to grab my create EP curve tool. So create curves EP curve tool and it seems to be leaning forward a little bit like so. So then it kind of curves. Ooh, that looks uncomfortable but I fix it in a minute. Kind of goes down like this, curves a little bit like so and then it's got this little flap. All right, so it's not perfect, it's not art. Let's go ahead and fix it. So right click control vertex and then we can round this out a little bit more so it might be comfortable. So maybe somebody can actually in fact sit on it. I'm gonna scale this a little bit and just kind of smooth this out a little bit. And I probably don't need this, so I'm gonna delete that and get a nice curve there, move this up a little bit. And again, I'm just gonna try to get something close. I'm not gonna get something perfect, but something close. So you can delete these vertices just to kind of smooth these out. I still feel this is kind of big. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, let's take a look at what we have. Let's go to the side view. All right, move this. Whoa, maybe I should just go to object mode first. All right, here we go. Move this up. All right, duplicate it. Something like this. Select these two. I'm going to go to curves. There's this fancy thing called loft. So what Loft does is that it creates geometry based on your curves, which is fantastic. All right, this kind of looks like it. Let's go ahead and convert it. We're going to go to Modify, Convert, Nerves to Polygon Options. I'm going to keep control points active and then tessellate. Doesn't look very good, but let's see what happens if we do a mesh smooth. All right, so we did keep its form. Now you may be wondering why is it so... It's gray on one side and black on the other. These are the normals, so we need to give it thickness so that it will look a little bit better. So I'm gonna undo, I don't need my divisions just yet. I'm gonna keep it simple for now and I am going to grab some faces, Control E, and I'm just gonna pull this just a little bit, something like that, okay? Now it's still black, so I need to reverse the normal. So let's go to, let's go to mesh display, reverse. All right, much better. All right, press three. So when we press three, it's a smooth preview. I think it's a good start, but let's go back to one. Definitely think it can go a little further. So I'm gonna undo a little bit until I get my extrude back. All right. Let's see if I can move this up a little bit, something like so. Going to reverse again, so mesh display reverse. I am going to edges, shift right click, insert edge loop tool. I'm going to get a couple of edges in here so that it will keep its form. So again, this is number three. And this is what it looks like so far. It's not exactly like the image, but it's getting pretty. I think it definitely could be a little thicker. So I might have to grab some faces here. Just 
clicking away. Click, 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 click. More clicks, more clicks, more clicks. Okay, great. All right, hopefully we didn't do anything crazy, like select something back here by accident, which obviously I did. So let's do this. There we go. And here looks like somehow I selected a bunch of random stuff. So that's why it's important to toggle. All right, let's push this out a little bit more, push this up a little bit more, maybe scale. Not too much. Okay. Does that look comfortable to sit on? The future is very uncomfortable, it seems. Okay. Let's go to mesh smooth. All right, so I'm going to hide this because we might need it. So this is the first one we have. Let's go ahead and rename this. This is going to be chair geo. All right, next we're going to do the little orb at the bottom. That's going to be easy. Should have started off with that. Uh, let's go to our inputs over here to the right. Let's decrease our section radius. And I'm just middle mouse and dragging, by the way. Let's reduce, actually, I'll keep this pretty high. Let's get a little closer. So what I'm doing is selecting it and middle mouse and dragging. So I do want this to be nice and smooth. So, okay, we're gonna put it right below. Double check, might need to be a little thicker. So let me increase the thickness, something like that. Cool. Okay, let's put that up below here. Move this up. All right, it's coming along. Let's do the table next. Let's see, what's the fastest way? Probably grab a plane and let's scale it. Maybe at the top view might be easier. Whoops, that's not even aligned. Whee, okay, now it is. Okay, let's make this a pretty good size, rectangle. And now we're going to delete some faces, probably all of these. And let's grab some vertices here. Let's just kind of try to make it similar. Okay. All right, let's grab some edges. Control, actually, let's grab faces. We're going to grab faces, Control E. Bring this up. All right, so far so good. And then we can grab, let's go back to the top view because we need to give it a little bit of curved edges. So let's add some edges. go just a little okay maybe now we'll do better okay all right I like that edge a lot more better okay cool um I think it's pretty thick so I'm gonna thicken it up a little bit more and now it's gonna be called our table geo geo stands for geometry duplicate make sure this is in the center move this to the center and let's make this a little bigger. Let's see, maybe this one. Okay, let's switch places here. Move this back here, put this over here. And the reason why is because this one, it, the original has the inputs remaining. So I might as well just use what I have. So I'm gonna, whoops, not that one. Let me increase the radius. Okay, great. So this is the table ring. Table, oops, ring, geo. This is the chair, ring, geo. And we have the chair. Let's go ahead and select everything. And I'm gonna save as, just in case I need this. Okay, modify freeze transformations, edit delete by type history, does that does become permanent. Let's go ahead and group these, modify center pivot. Then I'm going to duplicate it. 
I'm going to put it on the other side. 180 degrees. Then I'm going to duplicate this and put it on this side. So that's going to be 90. Oops, negative 90. And then I'm going to do, whoops, duplicate that like this, and then change this one to just regular 90. Bring this group up like so. And then now we have our living room. It's the start. Of course, we need a floor, so let's add a floor. I like to look below it and then bring this down to make sure there's no there's if there's any intersecting geometry there's very little of it and it looks like I'm gonna go over here change this to one one and I only need these two walls so control E look at this little trigger and up we go okay here we are our sci-fi living room is being gradually built. Awesome. All right, let's start here. Let's start here. I'm trying to kind of match what it has. Okay, cool. This is going to be the wall geo. Again, organizing is important. Select all this, edit, delete by type history, modify, freeze, transformation. All right, now that the models are done, let's go ahead and do the Academic Phoenix Plus. Here comes the plus part of the tutorial. All right, so I've been thinking, what, what else can I do with this? Uh, I'm going to show you how to animate. My tutorials are not usually about animation, but I do want to show you a little bit of animation just so that it doesn't limit you. It's a little extra thing you can add to your portfolio if uh, you choose to. In case you don't know about keyframing, you have to make sure that your timeline starts at 1. I'm going to be using my channel box, and you can click the shortcut S but the issue with that is that it will do a keyframe on every single channel. So you don't really want that. You really want to have complete control over it. So I just undid that. What I want is to kind of hover this up and down a little bit, just like a little spacecraft, Ooh, just a little bit. So I want to keyframe it here. So right click key selected. Let's say I want to move it to 10 frames. I'm just going to move it a little bit. I don't want too much of a hover. So key selected and then I'm going to go back to one middle mouse and drag this to 20 frame 20 right click and key selected. So what that does is that it copies the frame, the keyframe and just pastes it here by just middle mouse and dragging it and then keyframing it. It's a little trick. So now what we get is, is, oops, I feel like I'm in premiere or something where you hit the space bar and it plays. All right. So it looks crazy. That's a little fast. So I'm going to right click on the, okay. I just accidentally play blasted that. Now you know how to play blast, right click. Uh, let's go to playback speed and we want to do real time. And it, Maya will give us like a preview. There you go. Now I can't go in and keep adding more keyframes or more keyframes, but I'm going to show you the trick. This is going to require the, I have to find it. I haven't done this in a while. Windows animation editor, graph editor. There it is. All right. So if you have your geometry selected, it's going to show you this graph and these are your keyframes uh, that you can manipulate if you want to. So for example, if I can grab this and bring it down or up or left to right. Now what I want this for is because there's this really handy thing under curves called pre infinity and post infinity. So pre infinity cycle means that it's going to cycle before this happened. And post infinity means that it will cycle afterwards. So if I go to curves, post infinity cycle, it will continue on and on. How do I know this? Well, I just press play and then we can watch it hover. Now what's great about this is that if I wanted to, maybe this is going a little too fast and maybe I want to select this shift click and then you can drag this. Let's drag it to 30 and then this is going to be in the middle. Whoops. By the way, I can use the graph network for this too. Let me grab this. Oh, there's a keyframe here. Uh, and I'm going to grab this and drag it to, let's say, 15, which is right here. Right here. There it is, 15. Oh, I clicked S. So I was like, where is that all that coming from? Okay, right click, make that selection, and then I can break the connection. I can press play, and now it's a little slower. 
And there you have it, a quick tutorial on how to animate a hovering chair. I think it's going to add a little bit more to our environment and scene. It just adds a little extra plus in our Maya scene. So hopefully you found that interesting and helpful. That was the plus side of Academic Phoenix Plus. I hope that was helpful. I know that was a quick tutorial on how to model this, but the next step is going to be to texture this. So that's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to touch over procedural shading as well as incandescence. So come on back with the next exciting episode of Academic Phoenix Plus tutorials. Thank you again for listening, guys. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to like and share if you find these helpful. Let me know if you have any questions. Please leave your comments below. Again, take a look at academicphoenixplus.com for free tutorials, free models, free cheat sheets and all sorts of really good goodies. So take a look at academicphoenixplus.com and don't forget you can also download this model. So thanks for listening and I will see you in the next tutorial.